Our top story this week is once again, LulzSec, who are continuing their cruise looking for lulz. It's been hard to keep track of exactly what they hit versus what they have claimed to hit. Paceband isn't really the most reliable source. However, this is what we have so far. Aljihad.com was an early target of LulzSec this week, which was previously hit by the Jester back in March. The site was offline, presumably as the result of a DDoS attack. Then LulzSec claimed to have breached the NHS, and were able to grab numerous admin passwords. LulzSec said that they intend no harm towards the NHS and vow not to release the passwords, but implore the NHS to take a closer look at its security. The NHS says that no patient information or national systems were compromised, and that the attack only affected a very small number of website administrators. Because, of course, no one cares about website admins. This was followed by what LulzSec called the full docs of several employees of Endgame Systems, which they posted to Pastebin. Endgame Systems was implicated in the HB Gary mess as selling off zero-day vulnerabilities. This was closely followed by a dump of 55 admin accounts to various porn websites, as well as a large number of usernames and passwords from Prawn.com. The release was acted on quickly by Facebook, who quickly matched up the usernames in the list to Facebook accounts and forced those users to change their passwords. As part of the Titanic Takeover Tuesday, LulzSec aimed their Lulz cannons at Bethesda Softworks as their next target. LulzSec claims to have login information of over 200,000 users that it grabbed from the publishers of the game Brink and the upcoming release of Skirum. LulzSec promptly posted the dump to their website and pushed out a torrent file that included the booty they got from the raid, except for the password file, for now. In addition to Bethesda, the gaming servers for EVE Online also suffered a DDoS attack, as did gaming magazine The Escapist. EVE took the drastic action of taking all their servers offline while they investigated the attack. At some point this week, LulzSec announced a call-in number, 614-LULZSEC. Thousands of people called the number, while LulzSec just directed the number to various companies' call centers and sat back and watched the lulz. <laughs> One of the companies was Magnus.com, presumably because they couldn't explain how magnets worked. Other targets included the FBI field office in Detroit and the tech support line of, for World of Warcraft. Danger you know, approaching! Just for the lulz. The lulz bolt sailed on, looking for bigger fish, and found Senate.gov. The attack only affected the public-facing Senate website, but has prompted officials to review security for the site. And then they claimed responsibility for taking CIA.gov offline for several hours. Well, I admit, some of their attacks have been pretty lulzy, and they have definitely woken up the world with regards to information security. You have to wonder if the results are worth the mayhem. We also have to wonder just how much longer they can keep this up before someone finds them and shuts them down. <laughs>